much, Mr. Speaker, and it's a pleasure to follow my impassioned colleague from Skeena Bulkley Valley. I wish I had the same level of anger. I should, but I really come in, in absolute sadness today at the missed opportunity that's before us in Bill C-58. You see, Mr. Speaker, when the Liberals introduced this bill, they called it on their press relief press release the most comprehensive reform of access to information in a generation. It sure wasn't. I want to talk about what the Civil Liberties Association has said, First Nations, what they have said, uh, trade unions, what they have said, journalists, what they have said, and it's all to pan this effort as an appalling waste of time. And I couldn't do better than to quote my colleague from Skeena Bulkley Valley, who in turn quoted our information commissioner. She who has the most expertise on this bill of any. And she has said that it is, quote, regressive. She has said to Canadians, I prefer the Stephen Harper version of access to information than the one before us. That must be so galling to Liberals to hear. And then we hear today in the House, oh no, that was before the wonderful amendments we brought in. Those amendments made it all better. And we shouldn't be concerned, all those people who had those concerns, because they've made it right now. They have not, Mr. Speaker. They have not. They've made cosmetic changes to minor parts of the, of the, of the bill that do no make no difference to the main event. And the main event has always been the exceptions to the rule of disclosure. The exceptions that carve away the right that was given in the main section of the bill. And those exceptions were not touched. When I was in committee, I introduced on behalf of the NDP uh, several dozen, a dozen or, or more amendments to the, to the exceptions. Not one was accepted. Twenty amendments in total, but to the exceptions, I think there were a dozen that many, many uh, activists have talked about. And this isn't radical stuff. That would be, oh, the information commissioner who told us to suggest those amendments, to not make it regressive, but to make it better. How many of those were accepted, Mr. Speaker? Zero. Zero. And so the government has the gall to stand here before Canadians and take credit for something which is such an absolute farce, Mr. Speaker. And I just find it appalling that we are in this position. And yesterday I had the opportunity, indeed the honour, to stand with five chiefs from across this great country who do research on residential school settlements, on grievances involving specific claims, on, on land claims generally, on cut-off land claims. And what did every single one of them say, Mr. Speaker? That they weren't consulted. That this law will make things worse. And I thought that the no relationship was more important to this Prime Minister than that with First Nations. You can imagine, you could hear a pin drop in that press conference as one after another they stood up to castigate this government for yet another broken promise. This isn't just another bill, Mr. Speaker. This is what the courts have termed quasi-constitutional legislation. That in a democracy, the right to know is an essential feature. If we don't know what's going on and we can't find out, we live in a totalitarian state. So back in 1980s, the government finally introduced an access to information bill. And a generation later, it has ossified. It's a bill that no longer does the trick. They didn't even have computers in active use back then, so clearly things need to, needed to change. And yet those changes that were made and the government makes much of involve things like now you can get access to the mandate letters. Now we can tell you what we want to know under something called proactive disclosure. Now, Mr. Speaker, far be it for me to criticize making more information available, but it's what the government wants you to know by what they put on the website. And as if that somehow is the same as a person making a request to the Prime Minister's office for information, like they did under the sponsorship scandal when the Globe and Mail and Daniel LeBanc found out and told Canadians the abuses that were going on with their tax dollars, that's because they had the right to make a request and finally a tip delivered. The government wants to conflate, therefore, Mr. Speaker, access to information and proactive disclosure. A doctrine that's been around for many, many years in most provinces and at the federal government, and now they put it in the statute and we're supposed to think it's the most comprehensive reform of access to information in a generation. It's just absurd. 
Now, I care deeply about this, Mr. Speaker. I did my graduate work on freedom of information. I drafted the BC legislation and the Yukon legislation. I know when Canadians are being hoodwinked, and they're being hoodwinked by this bill. I think it needs to be withdrawn, and we need to do it right for Canadians. The experts are unanimous. This bill is in dire need of reform. And yet, what they do is bring in the, basically the codification of existing practices. And the, the ability for, uh, um, that British Columbia for an, uh, and most of the provinces have is very simple for an information commissioner to order the disclosure of information. It's very simple. After a few days, if the government doesn't choose to judicially review the order of the commissioner, it's the law. The government shall disclose it. I invite you, Mr. Speaker, to take a look at the so-called order-making power under this bill and see if you can figure it out. Because the information commissioner can't, doesn't believe it to be anything like what order-making power would suggest. The Prime Minister in opposition, I believe the only private member's bill that he brought in, interestingly, was on reforming the Access to Information and Privacy Acts. And the Access to Information Act, among the specific things he wanted to do, was make ministers' offices open, that is to say you can make a request and they shall respond, and likewise the Prime Minister's office. Now I just want to say it again. The government is conflating proactive disclosure, namely what they want to tell you, and the ability of any citizen to ask for information and have the, gov have the information commissioner order it disclosed. That's how it works in my province of British Columbia. It works very, very well. And most of the time, cases are settled. Ninety-some percent over the decades have been resolved through mediation. This needn't be expensive. It needn't be convoluted. But the government has pr provided something which is just uh, like a camel invented by committee. Uh, a horse invented by a committee is a camel. This bill is a camel. And, you know, what if people wanted to know, for example, about the Prime Minister's Christmas vacations, or whether the Minister's villas and private companies, would they be able to ask for that? Well, it wouldn't be proactively disclosed, I don't believe, and that, of course, is one of the crucial difficulties with this legislation. You know, Canadians also need to know that the, they haven't abolished the, the $5 fee which is the toll gate on citizens' right to access. How much does it cost to, to, to cash a check for five bucks? Fifty-five dollars, Mr. Speaker. That's your government in, uh, in, in action. And that is why Canadians are basically being paid, are paying millions of dollars to deny information to other Canadians. There's no duty to document as requested by, by the Commissioner. Their exemptions haven't changed, as I've indicated. And Every academic and every researcher, you know you're in trouble, Mr. Speaker, when the Canadian Association of Research Librarians comes down hard on a bill like this. So, Mr. Speaker, I know I've, I'm running out of time. I just want to end by saying, wouldn't it be nice if quasi-constitutional legislation involving privacy and our rights to information were somehow taken more seriously, that we had the opportunity to really engage in debate at committee and to have an opportunity, again, as a generational change to get it right. Unfortunately, the government is about to deprive us of that right. They're about to use, they have used time allocation, time allocation to bring down the guillotine so we haven't any more opportunity to discuss this quasi-constitutional legislation in this place. It's a travesty, it's appalling, Canadians deserve better. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.